This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Now let's create another cluster. This one's going to be similar to the simple failover cluster, but it's going to have more redundancy. So our node here is going to have some redundancy on an iSCSI network. We're going to use two network, network cards, use multipathing or MPIO, so that if one of these network cards goes down, we don't have to fail over to node B because we can use this other network card. We're also going to have teamed network cards on our public network so that we can have redundancy again. If we have one network card failed, we can run on the other one without having to fail over to node B. And also our iSCSI is saying we're going to give some redundancy there with our teamed network and using two network cards. Now you might be wondering, well, isn't the uh, failover cluster redundant? So, you know, if, if we had this go out, this network card, and this was all we had in our iSCSI network, we would just fail over to node B. And, well, that could be the case, and that could be just fine. It all depends on your particular environment and the planning that's gone into it. Can node B handle all the roles if we fail over everything from node A to node B? Can it handle everything, or is it running at kind of a degraded state? Maybe we're splitting the roles on node A and node B. Some are active on node B, some are active on node A. But if we pile them all onto one node, uh, you know, it runs okay, but not optimum levels. Well, in that case, this added redundancy can help because it can prevent some possible failovers because of a network card failure. But in addition to this redundancy, we also get more throughput. So we're adding two NICs here to our iSCSI network. So we can communicate on both of those NICs. So we get the load balancing down. So that's going to increase our throughput and hopefully reduce our latency a bit. Same with our public network. So if we're maybe copying large files into our nodes that are file servers maybe, the team is going to help because it's going to allow us to load balance that traffic across multiple NICs. The idea here is that we're eliminating single points of failure and adding throughput. Now, this design looks pretty good. We've you know eliminated a lot of single points of failure here. You might notice, well, the heartbeat connection, we're not teaming. So that could be a single point of failure. Well, we actually have some redundancy there because if you remember when we created our simple cluster, the heartbeat network is for cluster communication, which doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth, so we don't need the aggregated bandwidth of two network cards. But if that fails, it can also communicate over our public network. So we've got some redundancy already there. But what about our switches? Okay, well, this switch right here is a single point of failure. So we could even take it a step further, add another switch, connect the two switches, and have one of these NICs go into one switch, one of the NICs go into the other switch, then we've got some switch redundancy here. Same with this switch. So diagramming out your cluster can really help identify immediately single points of failure. And that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to eliminate single points of failure, more uptime, the most we can possibly have, and possibly increase throughput and processing power. So this new, a bit more advanced cluster gets us closer to that. 